My name is Yotama Tolengi. For the last 10 years, I've been creating food that celebrates the wonderful flavors, aromas, and colors of the Mediterranean. I love Mediterranean food. It's really in my blood. Now I'm exploring unique food traditions on four of the Mediterranean's most fascinating islands. Corsica. C'est formidable. That's what I wanted to hear, formidable. <laughs> Mallorca. I can't get over the fact that I'm cooking in the best location for a restaurant in the whole world. Sardinia. Hey, lobster! Aragosto, prima Aragosto! Prima Aragosto! Ah. And Crete. I feel like a caveman. This is my trophy. Let me show you how the food and people of these beautiful islands Salute. 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 will inspire you to create your own Mediterranean island feast. I'm starting my journey on the Greek island of Crete in the ancient capital, Heraklion. Of all the islands I've visited, I'm most excited about how the different cultures here have influenced the food. I'm getting further east along the Mediterranean, close to the Middle East where I grew up, and it all feels a little bit messier, not so European, not so clean, not so fixed. It's quite refreshing, to be honest. It's, it feels great. And I want to unravel and find what is actually happening here. So I'm here to explore the food and see how things unfold. Crete's the largest of the Greek islands and lies at the heart of the Eastern Mediterranean between mainland Greece, Turkey, and the Middle East. I'm hoping flavors of these different cultures will show up in the food. So I'm starting with a traditional Cretan breakfast that I'm told will remind me of Jerusalem, my childhood home. Hi, Despina. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you, too. Here at Kirkor, they're famous for bugatza, filo pastry parcels filled with cheese or custard. Who is the people that eat this? Everybody eats this. Everybody in Greece? Everybody. Ah, OK. When you cut it, you put cinnamon on the top, sugar or honey goes inside ah, okay. and gives you more taste. Pastries like this are all over the Middle East, so I'm curious to find out if the Cretan version tastes as good. It's absolutely lovely. You taste cheese, you taste honey, you taste cinnamon and the crunchy pastry. There is a lot of elements here that are really reminiscent of, of my culture. In places like this, that you see quite a lot in the Eastern Mediterranean, specialize in one thing. There is a kind of a reverential attitude towards that pastry, and that's what makes it so special. Everywhere I look, I can see clues that suggest the flavors here have a more Eastern influence. There's lots of kind of mixes of uh, herbs and spices packaged together. Like there's a tzatziki mix and there's a feta cheese mix. I don't know if it's for tourists or for locals, but it still shows that there is a pride in celebrating Cretan herbs. Uh, the wild herbs, the oregano, all those things that they are very much part of the food culture. In the hope of finding more traditional dishes, I've come to the market's oldest cafe. Hello. Hello. Are you Georgos? Yes. Nice to meet you. You're in the middle of work. My, my <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Lovely place, huh? Yeah, thank you very much. Like most restaurants and cafes in Crete, the customers love to drink raki, a strong spirit, a bit like ouzo. It's served with food and almost always with a Cretan speciality called dakos. This is dacos. This is dacos. It's more, uh, it's dried bread. Yes, oil, oil. And th th this is very popular in uh, Crete. Yes, yes. It's more Everybody small. likes it. Yes. A little tomato. The small pieces of tomato. A little oregano. Dried oregano is very popular on the island. It's very, very nice. And a, a little, little bit of lemon. lemon juice. Yes, lemon juice. So no vinegar. Yes, no vinegar. Just Here, oil, no vinegar. lemon juice. Lemon juice, yes. Is this like a meze? Mezes. There's more plates. 
So I can yeah, see quite a few things that are typical to Crete. Mm. You have a lot of olive oil, oregano, mm -hmm. and the dacos. I sorry, can, sorry, I can try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very delicious. Yeah. It's like a fresh pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Unique to Crete, this bread is the island staple. And made with barley flour rather than wheat, it has a delicious nutty flavor. Most of the places I've visited in the Mediterranean have a particular bread that's central to the food culture. And here in Crete, dacos is one of the most distinctive. So the next day, I'm heading out of the city into the hills towards Krustas, a village that's famous for dacos and the ladies who make it. I'm looking for Irini which is uh, uh, the woman who's supposed to show me the secrets of the dacos. Hello. 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 Ah, there's a bunch of you. Irini. Yes. Yotam. Efharisto. Parakalo. Yasu. Yasu, Yasu, Yasu. There are collectives like this all over Crete. These ladies gather once every six weeks or so to bake dacos, which they sell in the village and nearby towns. Oof, oof. <laughs> Irene, it's hard work, huh? They make a staggering 80 kilos of dough, which once baked, makes a bread that lasts for months. I'm full of admiration, a complete disbelief as how strong this woman is. She's kneading with so much gusto. After hours of determined work, the ladies shape the dough into loaves and then make cuts, which will form the individual dacos. Ah, no. Yeah, no. Oh, Irene, what is wrong? Ah. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Oh, because you know no what? No bono. No bono. No bono. Oh. <laughs> I'm obviously not cut out for this, and there's still a lot to do. Now the loaves have to rise for an hour before going into the oven. Is this something religious? Uh, oh, that's say like God, uh, God help me for a good bread. Uh, bread. Bread. Yes. I love the way food rituals bring people together on Crete. Baking bread is a perfect example. We now have to break the loaves into hundreds of individual pieces before they go back into the oven. Ah. <laughs> Whoa, this is hot! Blisters! <laughs> My God! While the dacos has its final bake, I'm going to use some of this sweet and nutty bread in a simple but delicious supper dish made with chickpeas and spices from the Eastern Mediterranean. Dacos is just what I had to cook with today because it's so special, it's so Crete. And back home, you can get Swedish crisp rolls. They're dry bread that you rehydrate with a bit of water or a bit of vinegar and oil. And I'm starting by getting these chickpeas. Basically, these chickpeas have been soaked overnight and then they've been boiling for about an hour until they're soft. Being here in Crete, closer to the east, it feels right to really go big on spices. I'm starting with cinnamon, then turmeric, sweet paprika, cumin, and a few crushed coriander seeds. I've got some salt, very important. Chickpeas always take a lot of salt. Olive oil. And now, stir, stir, stir. So basically the oil and the spices coat the chickpeas. It's ready to go on the heat. All these wonderful chickpeas with all the spices, typical flavors for the Eastern Mediterranean, all that loveliness is gonna go over my dacos. To add contrast and give a classic Mediterranean feel, I'm using a combination of chopped and grated tomatoes. I'm left with almost all the skin in my hand and all the juices are in here. Magic, huh? To the tomatoes, I'm adding finely chopped onion, a few crushed garlic cloves, pepper, 
and local olive oil. Now all I need is to assemble. These tacos are pretty thick, so I'm just gonna take bits and break them on the bottom. To partially soften the bread, I'm dribbling on a mixture of olive oil, red wine vinegar, and water. Just give all these wonderful pieces of bread a nice bath. You just want to get the right balance between soft and crunchy. Quite happy with the way it looks, kind of all mixes together into one fabulous tray. Being in Crete, you really feel like you've got one foot already in the Middle East, so it's completely appropriate to use chickpeas and use all these spices. The last layer is some wonderfully creamy local feta, basil, and of course, more olive oil. Then into this monumental oven. At home, about 20 minutes on a medium heat should do it. And that's my take on the most Cretan of dishes, tacos with spiced chickpeas and feta. Now we eat. Beautiful. Yeah? Oreo. Oreo. Very, very good. Mm. Oreo. She likes it? Wonderful. Mm. Like very much. Eff nice Thank you. Thank you for everything. Eff On the hunt for more foods that define this island, I go fishing for octopus and get some tips on how to cook it. If this breaks, it's ready. And use the freshest ingredients to make stuffed baby squid. I'm exploring Crete, discovering fascinating local foods and flavors. On my island travels, one of the great joys has been the amazing seafood, and Crete is no exception. The real star here is octopus, and I'm keen to find out more. It's okay. In the hope of catching some, I'm hitching a ride with local fisherman Georgos Alexis. He catches octopus with his dummy crab as bait using a hand line, but has only been a fisherman for the last 10 years. What did you do before? Uh, seamen. Are you I a seaman? Big ships for 35 years. 35 years? Like you left your life on the boat and you found something really relaxing to do. Yes, it's, it's, uh, I think this is the best life. Octopus is very popular in Crete. Yes, because it's good for Uzo. <laughs> Uzo or Raki? Uh, we have here Raki. Octopus likes Raki, octopus likes Uzo. Uzo, and wine also. <laughs> and wine. Octopus likes any alcohol. Yes, all the food in Crete, in Crete Island, is served with alcohol. So what do you think, George? You think we're gonna catch one tonight or no? I don't know. Because you I know I, I'm quite hungry. I caught it this morning. Ah, you caught it this morning? Yes, morning, yes. Out of luck, but hungry for the octopus Georgos caught earlier, we head back to the harbor to start cooking. The key to good octopus is to tenderize it first, usually by beating it. But the best way is put two, three days in the freeze. In the freezer, it breaks all the fiber. Bravo. If you like to see the octopus ready, you do that. If this breaks, breaks it's ready. Ah, if, uh, OK. So you Georgos is going to show me how they like to cook octopus in Crete using red wine. He puts onion, olive oil, and then the tentacles into a pan. Then we head downstairs into his tiny cabin to cook. Wow. This is tight. Yeah. George, you didn't put salt. Never. Oh, you don't put Never. any salt? No, no. Because all the water inside is... Salty. Yes. 
The octopus simmers in its own juices for half an hour before Georgos adds about two glasses of red wine. After another 30 minutes, the wine is mostly absorbed and the octopus is ready. Okay, so it's ready, yeah? Ready, yes. Try uh, waiting to see me how is it. Good? Very good. Delicious. Yeah. And it's very good because yeah. you get all the fruit and the acid from the grapes, just cooking the octopus even octopus more and making it more tender. Thank you. Yamas. Yamas. After last night's delicious octopus, I want to make my own seafood dish. So I've arranged to meet Yorgos at his friend Yanis's fishmongers. Yorgos, how are you? Fine, you? Very, Very good. good. Very good. Beautiful. These baby squid are perfect for stuffing. Really lovely, lovely squid, huh? Yes, lovely. And unlike octopus, can be prepared straight from the sea without tenderizing. To cook them, we're heading to Yanis's house just outside town. You go on the bike, and I will follow you in my car, and uh, we'll have a feast in the afternoon like proper Crete, Cretan men. Okay, we go together. Like the, mach okay. like the macho boys of Crete. Okay, come on. He's taking me to what I gather is a kind of a country hideaway. I don't know exactly what I'm going to see, but I'm looking forward to the, uh, the whole experience of cooking together. It's kind of cute. I can see the vegetable patch. Thank you for bringing me here. This is your little piece of uh, heaven here, right? Exactly. This is everything for me. What have you got growing? Come, 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 come. You can show me? Yes. Plenty of sunshine and good soil make Crete ideal for growing fruit and vegetables. And Yanis and his father are clearly doing well. This is a cucumber. Of course, my friend. We make salad with that. Salad? Yeah, salad. For everybody. For everybody, yes. <laughs> I'm looking for local herbs and vegetables that will go with my squid. Come to see the other uh, No, this is okra. What is it called? What, that's okra. Yeah, it's, uh, this is bamia. Bamia, it's bamia. bamia. It's okra. I love okra. I can use them too. Everything. You can use everything. Come, i show you some other things. Come. Growing vegetables is very much a, a tradition of Crete, right? Of course, yes. Always, always. Always been, and yeah. people love vegetables. That's why the, the old people, they go very old. Because they eat all these wonderful vegetables. Exactly, yeah. They don't eat a lot of meat. Before I start cooking, Yanis's father is gathering some of his favorite produce for me to choose from. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have uh, Good, eh? mint and celery, inside. courgette. Ah, and, and okra, bamia. Bamia. Efharisto. Your father is my hero. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to start. I'm going to use all these freshly picked ingredients to make stuffed baby squid with tomato and okra. This is the stuffing. So I start with some bulgur wheat that's been washed with some warm water. I've got some um, dill here. Beautiful parsley from uh, Yanis's garden. Now I'm adding some mint. Mint. Let's see what other treasures I've uh, got here. We've got some celery leaves. They're very strong. I won't use a lot, but just a little bit of celery flavor is nice. But at home, you could use a bunch of local herbs or a bunch of herbs you get from the supermarket. And I'll take about half a courgette and grate it. To the stuffing, I'm also adding chopped walnuts for a bit of crunch, currants for sweetness, the zest and juice of a lemon, plenty of Yanis's olive oil, oregano from the garden, and seasoning. What I'm trying to get here is a perfect balance in sweet and savory and herby. Okay, now for my squid. 
there's uh, here in the cooler waiting for me. There's this bit with the tentacles and the eyes and the beak. Can you just pull that out with whatever comes out? There's a little beak here that's quite tough. You want to get rid of that. The wings are these things. You want to get rid of them as well. And as you do that, also the skin comes off normally. And that's about it. Now I can just wash it. So those can go in the bowl. With all the squid cleaned, I can now start to stuff them. It takes a little bit of patience. And I'm going to try something I've never done before. I want to uh, keep the squid look, so I'm going to stick the tentacles back. And then I take a toothpick and pass it through, just like that. And I'm going to lay them here gently. I've got some okra from the garden, mm. so I'm making quite an effort not to break into the pod. And as long as you don't let the seeds come out, you're OK. It won't go as, uh, as mushy and gloopy as it can. Now I'm going to sear the squid for about a minute on each side, just to give them some color. As, uh, as they cook, they shrink. So they will uh, kind of wrap around the stuffing nicely. And now I'm going to turn this one over. And you can see it started getting a nice sort of golden brown kind of color. With the squid lightly browned, I'm searing the okra in the same pan for a couple of minutes to seal. OK, that's done. Now I'm ready to make my sauce. I'm using chopped onion, garlic, and some spices, cinnamon, and sweet paprika, which is good for color. And of course, as I'm in Crete, I have to use raki, although you could use white wine. The fumes of the raki are marvelous. I think I'm going to add a splash more, just because I can. To the sauce, I'm adding chopped tomatoes, lemon juice, and about a teaspoon of sugar just to balance any acidity. In goes a layer of the okra, which makes a bed for the squid to lie on while they cook. Onion. Lastly, a little water, on with the lid, and I'm going to leave it to cook on a low heat for about 30 minutes. Yamas, George, yamas. Yamas, George. You're the best. Yamas, the best. It's been cooking for about half an hour, and you can really smell the raki and the uh, sweet spices and even a little bit of the herbs that are inside. Really, really wonderful. Sprinkle that on top. Just a garnish. That's it. That's my uh, stuffed squid. Take, take a bit of okra and try this squid also. Oh. And now I want you to tell me what you think. What do you think? The truth. Exactly. Exactly. He is no good. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad. Now... <laughs> OK. So you see, I got a compliment. Warmed by wonderful Cretan hospitality, I go looking for authentic home-cooked dishes. This is the food of the god. Yamas! 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 Help make delicious Cretan feta and put it to unusual use in a cheesecake. Screams lusciousness and beauty. I've been in Crete for a few days now and have come inland in search of dishes that define this beautiful Greek island. I've come to Katalagari, a typical village up in the hills about 10 miles out of Heraklion. I've been invited to this family-run taverna, Rusanti's Yard, where the owner has promised to show me some Cretan home cooking but I wasn't expecting to be greeted by the whole family. Maria, Bobby, Irini, Kostas, I will not remember. <laughs> 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 this yes, is your yes. kitchen. Yes. 
Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so it's like a combination between yeah. a home and a restaurant. Yes. Let's yes, do it. Yes. <laughs> okay, I also take an apron. You think this is my size? No, 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 no. You think it's your color? It's, it's good. Yes, yes. It suits me, no? Yes, yes. I look like one of your girls. Chrysanthi <laughs> oh. is showing me how she makes an island classic. Stuffed vegetables known as gemista. Look, look. You open the top like that. Like box. Yeah. Also on the bottom. A little bit. Well, ah, for the juice yes, to, grow, yes, to go yes, out. Yes. Chrysanthi, you teach me some new things. Stuffing of vegetables is very popular in Crete. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it's important for the Creta. The vegetables. Yes. They say that the Crete diet yes. is the healthiest diet in the world, and people live until. Yes, because very it's the old. oil and also the vegetables. Vegetables and yes. oil. Yes. Chrysanthi salts the vegetables to draw out the moisture in the flesh. She keeps the insides and mixes ah, in chopped mean. onion to make the stuffing. She then adds fresh mint parsley and rice so she uses short grain rice yes. not, not not like basmati rice no 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 because this is much better for stuffing yes. a, lot a lot of oil a lot of, a lot of oil. oil the stuffing seasoned with pepper salt and then cumin which i'm seeing all over the island vegetable stuffing is very much a family affair here and takes place every day on the restaurant terrace which looks out over the valley below. This is uh, the most beautiful view, huh? Yes, of course. As well as vegetables, the family roll the stuffing inside vine leaves to make another classic, dolmades. Look how beautiful she makes them. She is the queen of the dolma. We Oh, wow. Μετά θα ανοίξει το ψήσιμο αυτό, πες του. Σι όπεν, σι όπεν. Και θα γεμίσει ρύζι, αν δεν το κλείσει σωστά. Κρυσάντη uses young leaves from the vine on the terrace behind us, which she soaks in salty water for a few days. At home, you can buy them in a jar, ready to use. Olive oil. Yeah. And we are ready for cooking. This is going in the oven. Yes. And this one on top, on the stove, yes, on yes. the gas. Yes, on the gas. The vegetables bake at a medium heat for about half an hour. She do this one for success. For success. Ah, like yes. the cross yes. on yes. the food. Yes. 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 So it's success. Yes, yes. yes. success. Yes. Nice. Next, Crisanti has a surprise for me. And it's a dish that I didn't realize makes an appearance on pretty much every Cretan menu. Snails. You eat snails, snails, right? Yes, of course. We love snails. Yes? Yes, of course. After cleaning them, she fries the snails with olive oil and onions and then adds tomatoes, cracked wheat, and boiling water. This looks the best thing ever, I have to say. Oh, my God. This is the food of the god. Food of the god? Yes. Yamas! 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 Yamas. Yamas. Yeah, yeah. Nice Yamas. to meet you. Yamas. Nice to meet you. Hey, wait. Chrysanti has produced an amazing feast. And once again, there's a sense of ritual and togetherness that making food in Crete seems to inspire. I need to try the snails. Delicious. Oh. I'm not usually a big fan of snails. But I have to admit that I do love the Cretan way of cooking them with cracked wheat. And I can't wait to try the stuffed vegetables. It's just perfect because the rice is al dente mm -hmm. and lots of flavor. Mm -hmm. Really Hola, delicious. Caroma, dale, mama, There's another iconic ingredient from the Eastern Mediterranean that some claim originates in Crete, and that's feta cheese. First recorded in the region thousands of years ago, the feta here is some of the best I've tasted. So I'm heading to meet someone who produces the cheese using milk from his own sheep and goats. Yorgos Vranakis runs his own restaurant and also comes here every day to do the milking. 
Each animal seems to produce an amazing amount of milk, apparently up to five liters a day. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't do it good like that. Is he working this? Ah, okay. With the You work this? But, ah, oh. okay. We're taking the milk back to Georgos' restaurant to start the process of making the feta. He created his restaurant in the house where he grew up and still lives here today. Beautiful place, huh? Big mulberry tree. Mulberry tree and the bed there. You see, every every night I sleep in there. This bed, you sleep yes. there. So I sleep in there in the summer. In okay, the let's go on in and you can show me how to I, fix. I want to learn how to make feta. I want to learn, see what you make. And now we must clear the, the milk. You okay. understand? Look at that. Eh? Because the feta wants to be very clear. It's a okay. And this is a the mix of goats and sheep. And the goat and sheep, yes. Together. It's the best feta. The milk goes onto the heat to warm to about 80 degrees. Then Georgos' mother adds rennet, the enzyme that causes it to split into solids or curds and the liquid whey. The milk takes about an hour to separate, and then the curds are lifted out to form the cheese. It's ready. Take the pieces and put inside. Wow. We put in salt, eh? Salt you put all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I know. Once the feta is firmed in the basket, it's put into brine to mature. It's this process that gives the cheese its unique salty, tangy flavor. How old is the feta? Well, three months. Three months. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Real delicious. Mm -hmm. Georgis's feta is particularly creamy, but still salty. So I'm going to use it a little differently to make something sweet. A kind of deconstructed cheesecake with cherries and crumble. What's a better way to use feta than in a cheesecake? I mean, okay, some people may say it's a bit weird because it's a salty cheese, but in actual fact, a bit of salty in a sweet is always great. And just try to break it really as much as possible before I start adding my, my cream cheese. Just normal cream cheese, any good cream cheese would do. And I'm adding it in bits so it starts to get incorporated into the feta and mix with it. Into the cheese, I'm adding casted sugar and lemon zest. That lemony flavor where it adds freshness, lighten it up, just wonderful. Now I'm mixing in some whipped cream. You want to uh, not whisk it too much, just a gentle fold so it doesn't split. What a lovely place to sit and have lunch, huh? The mixture goes into a dish to set for a couple of hours in the fridge while I make a start on the crumble. So a few almonds, and then we're just gonna chop them quite roughly. So that's more or less the way I want it. Now I'm ready to put everything together. Some butter, you want it sort of pretty cold, cold enough so you can actually work with it a little bit. If it melts, it's very hard to make a good crumble. To the butter, I'm adding brown sugar, wholemeal flour to add a nice nutty flavor, plain flour, salt and black sesame seeds. Visually, it won't be the same, but using white sesame seeds is absolutely fine. And now I'm just working it with my hands, which is the best way. And now it's ready to bake. While the crumble browns for 15 to 20 minutes at a medium heat, I can get on with the cherries. It has to be cherries because they're just so nice and abundant at the moment. And I'm gonna add a bit of sugar. Again, not much. A couple of star anise, one of my favorite spices, it really imparts a wonderful flavor, and a couple of strips of uh, orange peel. Orange and cherry is a really nice combination. There you go. As the cherries cook, I'm adding some lemon juice for a little acidity and a splash of orange liqueur. 
and um, it's ready. As it cools down, the flavors will intensify even more. The crumble has baked and the cheese and cream mixture has set, so I'm ready to assemble my cheesecake. Uh, you can do it whichever way you like, but the idea is just to get a nice height on the plate. A little bit of crumble. And now some of these wonderful cherries. It's nice to pour some of the juices around on the plate, just so that it kind of screams lusciousness and beauty. Now more of the crumble. To finish the dish, I'm adding some wild blackberries and a drizzle of Cretan olive oil. Don't be afraid. I think uh, some people would say, OK, what do I do? why do I use olive oil? But actually, it's really, really nice. For this recipe, and every dish I cook during my time in Crete, go to my scrapbook at channel4.com slash yotam. As my journey nears an end, I'm lucky enough to join a mountaintop feast where I discover a new way to prepare lamb. So you drink a bit of... Ah, really? And under the watchful eye of my hosts, I make a Greek classic, souvlaki. the end of my journey on Crete. But before I leave the island, I want to experience the food and cooking ritual that's at the heart of so many Cretan celebrations. I'm going to meet a family that do some fantastic things with lamb. There is a certain way of cooking the lamb on spits, and I'm going to see how it's done, and find a little bit about the way of life in the mountains of Crete. I'm privileged to have been invited to join a big family celebration in the mountains right in the heart of the island. Yasu. Yasu. Yota. Yasu. Hi. I'm nice to meet you. You nice are? You I'm Yanis. Yanis, nice to meet you. So uh, this is where the family gets together and eats and all that kind of business. Yes, we're going to cook everything uh, today and we start just uh, when you are ready. I'm ready. I'm, I'm starving. This place is very special to Yanis' family. At least 10 generations have lived and worked here as shepherds. And out of respect to their memory, the family still cook in the traditional way. You've been coming and cooking lamb like this yes. all your life? Yes, almost uh, every week. We put the, the meat here, like this. OK. So we can cook here about 24 pieces of meat. Uh, we are ready to, to prepare We're ready? Ooh. Even the lamb comes from family members who still keep sheep on the mountain. Wow. It is kind of butterflying, the meat. So it's all open up into equal thickness. So basically the idea is getting it all flat. So it cooks in similar time. Yeah. And there's a, there's a name for this method of cooking? It's, it's called? Uh, Anticristo. Anticristo. And what does the Anticristo mean? And the meat is opposite. That ah. means Anticristo. Anticristo means opposite the fire. Opposite the fire. And what is this? Wine. We we'll put a little bit of wine and then the salt. Now the salt, OK. Yes. So you drink a bit of... Ah, really? Ah! So the wine makes the salt stick. I love it. Good way. I think I'm going to adopt this method in my restaurant. It's yours there now. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can... I don't think I can spray as well as you can, but I can try. Try to do it. By this way. <laughs> OK, one more time. Ah, good! <laughs> <laughs> this technique gives spit roasting a whole new meaning and is one Cretan tradition you might not want to try yourself. But certainly using a marinade to help the salt stick to the lamb is a good idea. How long does it take? Uh, from now and then about two and a half hours. 
This is man's cooking. Time. Yeah, that's supposed to. The men cook to have fun, and the women, they cook because they have to feed everybody. That's right. That's right. It's, uh, it's not a hobby, it's a work for a woman. It's very hard to cook this meat. Yeah. It's not but you only do it once a week, my friend. <laughs> they do it six days a week, so okay. don't complain. We are party. <laughs> when breaks are placed round the Andy Cristo, and while the lamb cooks, I want to contribute a dish of my own. Though it seems I'm not going to be cooking alone. I have an audience. I'm going to brave a couple of Greek classics using some Cretan flavors and another of the island's favorite ingredients, pork. I've got here some um, pork uh, thigh. So I'm just going to take these pieces and cut them into rough squares. And you want nice big chunks. It shrinks a little bit as it cooks. I'm making a marinade for my pork using lemon juice, olive oil, dried oregano, dried mint, and some sweet spices. I'm using ground clove. I don't know if it's very Cretan, but it's very Middle Eastern. And uh, some ground star anise, cumin, some chili flakes, and salt. Very important for when you marinate meat. Don't be stingy. I'm also adding some crushed garlic, ground cardamom, and white wine vinegar. Now it's just a case of putting the meat on the skewers. It looks good? Yeah, it looks very good. Look very good, but yeah. does it look like proper souvlaki? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> now the marinade goes over the pork. Ideally, you should leave it for a few hours or even overnight. To go on the side, I'm making a salad of cucumbers, peppers, mild green chilies, and red onions. For the dressing, I'm making a paste of garlic, more red onion, and some salt, to which I'm gradually adding olive oil. You emulsify your ingredients together and make them creamy as you add your oils bit by bit. A dash of white wine vinegar, and the dressing goes on the salad. I'm adding some nigella seeds, which add a peppery, oniony flavor and are now pretty easy to find in supermarkets. Now I'm going to make a, a kind of tzatziki. I mean, it's probably one of the most iconic Greek dishes in the world. Um, I'm going to do my version. I'm using courgette as it has more body than cucumber, and I'm adding salt to draw out the moisture. And as a result, the courgette will be much crunchier. My tzatziki consists of Greek yogurt, olive oil, crushed garlic, salt and lemon juice. How beautiful is that? It's just spectacular. I'm gonna put my courgette in there that's been strained and drained. Now just stir it. I'm gonna leave it half stirred so you can see those streaks of courgette and oil. I just think it looks good. My skewers are a little small for the Andy Cristo fire, so Yanis has lit the barbecue for me. I'd say four minutes on each side. It really depends on the size of the pieces. Do you think it looks delicious? Uh, yes, I think so. This is uh, the butter. butter. I butter. want it to go a little bit brown. To enrich the tzatziki, I'm also making a classic bird noisette, a browned melted butter. You can see those little brown flecks, and you can smell the, the kind of the nutty flavor of the butter coming. OK, we're ready? Yes. Let's take it off. A, a bigger blade. OK. While the pork rests, I'm adding the brown butter to the tzatziki and finishing off my salad with some chopped mint and dill. And then we're ready to plate and to eat. The meat skewers just pile up nicely. I'm going to put a little bit of salad on the side. And once that's all filled up nicely, I'm going to put a little bit of dried mint, just a little final touch over the tzatziki. That's it. Souflaki with salad and my tzatziki. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think my souvlaki will stretch around the whole family. But thankfully, after three hours cooking, there's a mountain of lamb to retrieve from the fire. This is uh, pretty medieval. OK, we put there in this uh, wood table and okay. cut it there. Wow. There's definitely a sense of a proper ritual happening here. I mean, the veneration in which the meat is to handle with. It's very delicious. It's still, like, really moist in the middle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a caveman. <laughs> this is uh, my piece. This is my trophy. Yeah, you okay? Okay. Come with me, Some souvlaki. Anyone want some? Yes. Where's your plate? Oh, this is good. It's very clear that in Crete, more than other islands that I visited, the food is really an excuse for everybody to get together. So the food is the center of a community and it's a creator of a community. And it's the kind of heart of Cretan society. And it's a very refreshing and a very beautiful thing to see, to experience, and to be part of. I've been overwhelmed by the extraordinary hospitality of the Cretan people. And I'll never forget food that's a fascinating mix of local ingredients Delicious. and Eastern flavors. There is a kind of a reverential attitude, and that's what makes it so special. Next time, the dramatic landscape and ancient food traditions of Sardinia. I feel like a witch on the cauldron. Hey, lobster! Wow. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful. Tomorrow, beautiful food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's next Thursday at 9, and tomorrow George Clooney tells the story of chaos and confusion surrounding the Kennedy assassination and one man's mission to break the news to the world, JFK news of a shooting at 9. Tonight a more for Fitz has been caught with his pants down. Cyrus dodges the questions and the mole is revealed, but trouble at the White House doesn't end there. Scandal is next.